Hi, welcome back guys. This is your friend. Let us head fanfics. Back with amazing fanfiction. This is the series of What if Demon Deku had evil quirk? Now before starting, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. Midoriya Izuku had an evil quirk. That's what Bakugo told them. They never saw it but Bakugo was gonna be a hero so of course he was right. Right. They all thought this up until the final day of high school, when their career paths were being finalized. That's when they began to doubt. I would ask what you want to be but I know you all want to be heroes. The teacher shouted as he tossed the papers into the air and a multitude of students began flaunting their quirks. You should teach them their place lord no. Don't lump me in with all these C-list sidekicks teach. I'm out of their league. That brat is pompous. Knock him off his pedestal I said no. You want to go to UA. University don't you, Bakugo. W-H-A-A-A-A was the general response from the class. That's right. Bakugo announced as he leapt from his chair to his desk. I aced the mocks exams. I'm the only one getting in from this shitty school. He boasted, punctuated by some crackles from his hands. You want to go to UA. Two, don't you Midoriya? Sick bastard called you out. Why not punish him lord? I want to be a hero. That's why. An explosion pulled Midoriya out of his internal dialogue, sending him reeling to the ground. They don't take villains at UA. Deku, stay out of my way. This is my origin story. I'm gonna be the only one to get into UA. From this hellhole, all you are is some minor antagonist. I am not a V-villain Kakin. I just want to be a H-hero. Why do you act so pathetic among them? It causes less problems. If you want to be a hero so bad here's an idea. Take a swan dive off the roof and take care of a villain yourself. The class looked shocked and some disgusted by Bakugo's comment. The teacher even looked slightly miffed over the comment. Not that he cared about Izuku, just that their star pupil could be in danger over this scandal. But the worst reaction of all was from Izuku himself and a girl who sat nearby. How dare he declare something so horrid. I'm a devil and I don't go that far. He calls us the villain. We need relieve this buffoon of his god complex, do we not lord? Indeed it's Surter, I guess we can finally agree on something. A chuckle escaped the verdant teen's lips at that thought, causing Bakugo's rage to multiply exponentially. Explosions detonating against the desk and in Izuku's face. Bakugo has stopped harassing Midoriya so much. He's just as good dot 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 as dot 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 you dot dot the girl shouted, trailing off and bracing herself at the end as Bakugo launched himself at her before clothes lining as the collar of his shirt was grabbed. Izuku stood up from his seat, still gripping Bakugo's shirt. A feral grin in place upon his face and a dark, sadistic chuckle rumbling from his chest as the snapping of bones accompanied the sight of the small teen's height growing to a total of 6'6 six six and towering over the blonde detonator. Deep green, almost black, horns sprouting out of his skull and curling back in a fear-inducing mockery of a ram's and fangs sharpening out of his canine. A voice not quite as rang out the demonic boy's lips. You want me dead so bad Katsuki, do it yourself. I'm not going to kill myself and I'd oh so hate to see all your effort go to waste. Smile widening as he felt the power he repressed finally merge with his body fully oh how wonderful it is to be finally one. My lord it's certainly better than I had expected. You bastard, you're effing looking down on me aren't you? Quit it you effer. A blast connected with Izuku's face, drawing a gasp from the viewers, only to be stunned when the smoke cleared to show an unfazed Izuku grasping Katsuki's hand and forcing the explosive boy to the floor. Indeed I am, I pity villains like you Katsuki, thinking you're better even though you're nothing more than another pathetic a hole on a planet full of them. Now, the verdant teen's eyes flashed orange at the words that followed, sit back down in your desk and behave. And to the surprise of everyone, he listened like an obedient dog. That was also the moment that most people noticed Izuku's state of dress. His clothes being shredded due to the sudden size change, resulted in him in nothing other than his gakaran pants which had been reduced to shorts. Instead of his previous scrawny physique, he displayed a lithe and toned form that seemed powerful enough to crush a watermelon. Midoriya stepped in front of the door as the girl tried to leave the classroom, startling her and causing her to fall back and drop her back. Oh, I'm sorry, didn't mean to knock you over, he said softly, as if talking to a scared animal. He might as well have been, as he noticed the feline ears and tail that came attached to the girl. Helping her up he smirked as she dusted herself off. I didn't think falling for me was so easy though, he uttered just loud enough for her to hear, eliciting a blush and small squeak as she shot her gaze back to the ground. At least give me your name before anything else short stuff. Even before his transformation he had been taller than her, as she stood just at 5'12". Keikaniko added Suko. Well then Keikaniko, thanks for trying to stand up to that a hole earlier. Means a lot, knowing he could have kicked your ass but doing it anyway. He smiled as he pet her head, gaining him another blush and a quiet purr. Wanna grab some food since the day is over. Got nothing to do and a new friend to get to know after all. There's this great ramen place I go to nearby. He punctuated with a confident smile. As they walked to the gate they made small talk, discussing where each of them wanted to go. 
She, like him, wanted to attend Yue, as hero course, much to his joy. They also discussed her quirk, learning that she was a human with most of the attributes of a feline. Enhanced agility, claws, small strength boost, as well as inclination to cuddle and the enjoyment of head pats. As they approached the gate, an explosion rang out as Izuku grabbed Itsuko and tanked a blast from the blonde bastard of Aldera High. I'll show you what happens when you look down on me. F and Nico Bick was all the blonde could ran out before being grasped at the throat by a completely undamaged Izuku. You want to see what it looks like when someone really looks down on you, peasant? It could certainly scar you boy. A voice, deeper than natural and a human rumbled from Izuku's throat as the nails on his fingers blackened and stretched into claws that dug into Bakugo's skin. Peasant, you useless F. I'll show you your place. Fine, you asked, boy. The snapping of bones once again filled the air, as Izuku grew further to a height of 13, skin cracking like leather and turning a fiery red highlighted by an inkai green, horns growing and curling further, wings, bat-like and crimson as his skin sprouting from his back as a tail slithered into existence as well. Completing the horrifying visage was the snarling, demonic face resting between the horns. A whimper shook from the explosive teen's throat as his body trembled. Well, show me my place peasant. Embers flew from the monster's mouth as he dropped back Hugo, who ran through the gates screaming about getting lucky and revenge. Shifting down, now in his gym clothes from his locker nearby, Izuku noticed the shaking form of Itsuko and sighed. Kaniko, he started, causing the skittish girl to jump, you know I'm not gonna hurt you right. The girl stood there, seemingly assessing him, before slowly nodding. Reaching out he scratched behind her ears, earning him another purr before his hand was smacked away by a blushing and pouting Itsuko. As they made their way to a nearby ramen shop for a late lunch Izuku heard a whisper from next to him. HM, speak up Kaniko, I can't hear you if you're muttering like that sweetie. Squeaking, Itsuko's head shot up to look at him. I I said see call me Itsuko, you've protected me twice now, it's the least I could do. I if that's okay I am mean. It's perfectly fine Itsuko dear, calm down. I won't bite. He leaned and smirking and whispered in her ear. Unless you want me to that is. Yeah. I Izuku what is wrong with why you? She screeched before shoving him back with a blush so bright you'd be forgiven for mistaking her for a neon sign. Huh. Oh my god that was amazing. Izuku began laughing so hard he could barely breathe as Itsuko pouted next to him. You suck Izuku. Whatever you say. Itsuko Izuku teased, drawing out each syllable of her name in a sing-song voice, causing the blush to deepen. Eventually, the two managed their way to the ramen shop. Stepping in they were greeted with a calm atmosphere in a small seating area with a muted green paint job applied to the walls. A girl with vines for hair stepped out from the kitchen. Hello, and welcome to Shizaki Ram she cut off as she saw Izuku and instantly pulled out a cross and began muttering lat. Izuku grabbed his chest and dropped to his knees gasping, Itsuko rushing to help him as the vine-haired girl smirked and spoke faster. Suddenly she was cut off by a laugh bubbling out of Izuku's mouth as he stood up grinning, fangs glinting. Oh oh wow, aren't you a truly horrible person little Shio? I didn't expect this place to be so quirkist after coming here so long. Shizaki was just staring at him as suddenly vines wrapped around him causing his grin to grow wider, threatening to split his face. I am not quirkist for exercising a demon, hell spawn. The Latin began again, having no effect against the boy as he began to become a little miffed. I could report you to the police girl, now release me before I make you. I just want to enjoy some ramen in my new friend here's company. He punctuated the threat with a burst of embers from his palms. Realizing the girl wasn't listening he released a burst of flames from his palms, burning the vines and sending the rest reeling back to her. Atsuko let's find somewhere else. I've already been harassed enough today by bastards like her. Stepping out of the store he turned back and glared one last time at the girl. By the way, doesn't God teach you to love thy neighbor? And I thought you'd be happy. You always told me I should accept my quirk no matter what every time I came in Shizak. He spat before following Atsuko the rest of the way. So, this is the famous UA. University. Seems like a normal school to me, lord. Perhaps on the outside it's certer, but this is where we will prove everyone wrong. That, oh, I can get behind that lord. We will show them all we are worthy of the title they bestow upon so many idiots. Walking alongside Itsuko, Izuku made his way through the gates and towards the written exam. The questions are surprisingly easy, for a school of UA. As caliber, mostly just average high school exam questions. As he makes his way into the assembly hall for the practical he begins to notice the stairs turning towards him, smiling wider and standing straighter, his inner demon adoring the attention, he makes his way to his seat and kicks up his feet. If the practical is anywhere close to the written exam's difficulty then this should be Keikwa. As present Mike makes his way on stage Izuku's grin nearly splits his head in half. This place really is crawling with pro heroes, amazing. Can I get a yeah? Present Mike's voice rings out into the hall. Izuku responds with a loud whistle and a whoop earning a literal and metaphorical spotlight on him. 
Now that's the spirit examining 666. Present Mike went on to continue explaining the practical robots. Hell yeah. Then as he was about to explain the final robot a boy with blue hair shot up. Sir, the pamphlet lists four robots but you have only mentioned three. If this is a printing mistake that is highly unacceptable for a school of UA. S. Caliber. Then the boy turned to Izuku, getting him another spotlight. And you. That was clearly a rhetorical question Mike asked. And you aren't even paying attention. If you cannot take this seriously I have to ask that you leave. Present Mike was about to respond but as he started Izuku stood up. Ingenium air, take your seat. You're disturbing the rest of us as we try to listen to the proctor. He was about to explain the last robot. And I'm trying to relax before the practical so I don't get overwhelmed. You are causing more problems than you are fixing. After that Izuku sat back down. Nice work Adserter. Your first response wasn't murder this time. Izuku remarked sarcastically in his mind. After the explanation of the final robot the students loaded onto the buses to their test location. Sadly, Itsuko was in a separate location so Izuku was on his own. As he stretched to get ready he took off his tracksuit top which gained him some more stares as his scar riddled and muscled torso was exposed. Excuse me. The blue-haired boy began, slapping his hand on Izuku's shoulder, but not being able to finish as he was grabbed by the throat. Dropping him, Izuku sighed. Don't sneak up on people. Though was all they got as the ground cracked and Izuku shot into the arena. Claws extending he began rending machines to pieces and using enhanced strength to smash them to oblivion, making sure not to go all out. As to leave points for other applicants Izuku began a warpath heading in a random direction collecting as many points as possible, saving some weaker prospects along the way. Finally, after looping back to the center of the mock city Izuku had accumulated around 89 points. Suddenly, the ground began rumbling as a large robot emerged from the floor. I believe they downplayed the zero-pointer a bit, you think? As the massive machine rampaged through the streets Izuku searched for people in trouble when he heard a shout. A girl, brown hair in a bob cut, was trapped under some rubble directly in the monstrous robot's path. Stepping up he saw the Ingenium Air running away. Idiot, you're training to be a hero. Wings shooting out of his back, Izuku shot into the air towards the machine flames coalescing in his hand before he landed on the face and plunged his hand through the lens releasing the massive ball of flames within setting off a massive explosion within the head. Cackling, Izuku dove into the flames of the wreckage and began clawing and shredding the internals of the robot, setting explosions off across the entire body. Finally, as the machine collapsed back, Izuku climbed from the wreckage coated in oil and a small bit of blood, heaving for breath. Making his way over to the rest of the examinees he noticed even more stares than before the exam. He flashed them a fanged grin before his wings flapped and he shot off into the air with a cloud of dust. After the exams Atsuko and Izuku were walking to the train station together when they passed under a bridge. And then everyone was just staring at me. Like come on. Also some chick was naked. Like stark ass naked. It was weird. I don't know why. W what? Why would s someone do t that? I dunno. Lord, I've told you this. You can see creatures disguised by the veil of invisibility. Oh, turns out I can see invisible people. That's why I guess. W wait, you didn't K no. How'd you find out? I didn't tell you. My quirk is sentient. Really weird actually. I've literally got a devil's advocate with me at all times. As Itsuko was about to respond there was a rattling and a raspy voice. Hee hee hee. Two good sized invisibility cloaks. Perfect. Now I can escape that blonde bastard. As the sludge villain lunged he was engulfed in a ball of flames. The last thing he saw was the impassive, slightly agitated, face of Izuku. Do not fear for I am he oh all might shouted and froze as he jumped from the sewers to see the burning sludge villain and an agitated Izuku with a shaking Itsuko hiding behind him. Oh, all might. Yeah this dude tried to kill and possess us so it's not illegal. Is there any paperwork for this? No young man, you are fine. Enjoy your date. With that, All Might launched off as Izuku began laughing at Itsuko's embarrassment over All Might's mistake. After calming down Izuku kneeled down to her height and sighed. Are you alright Itsuko? I know that must have been pretty terrifying. All he got in response was a small nod from the shorter teen. Sighing, he held open his arms and smiled. Not his grin, not his sadistic smirk, but a small genuine smile. See Mir, let's get home. She nodded again and hugged the boy, whose wings sprouted and launched the two into the air. Flying home, he joked about the sights and the people until the shy girl in his arms was smiling brighter than the sun. That smile made his day. Two weeks after the sludge incident. Hey, hey Itsuko, why aren't jumper cables allowed in clubs? Midoriya Izuku if you don't stop with the puns I am going to claw your eyes out. Okay okay geez Atsu. Izuku sighed, his head hanging off the bed as Itsuko sat on the floor next to him playing some random game on her phone. Izu you need to relax. The letters will come soon. Okay. Over the two weeks Izuku and Itsuko's friendship grew rapidly. 
Izuku, gaining his first friend in 14 years and Itsuko finally having someone to bring her out of her shell resulted in a duo that would commit murder for each other. Izuku had almost done so on two occasions in fact. In his words I'm literally a devil and even I wouldn't harass a woman. This is why murder should be legal. That statement was quickly followed by scolding from Itsuko about openly admitting to plotting murder. After getting to know each other better, the two learned they lived in the same apartment building. This revelation resulted in the two spending every moment possible together. Like now, as they lazed in Izuku's room on a random Sunday wishing Yue handled their postal department better. Suddenly, Izuku's door was busted down by an excited Inko Midori. Kids the letters are here. Come on. She shouted before scrambling back into the living room followed by the children. In the living room was two letter as well and a laughing Mrs. Kaniko. Izuku and Itsuko played rock, paper, scissors to see who would open their letter with smaller teen winning. Ripping open her letter a small metal disc which produced a hologram of a tired man in black clothes. Good job, you made it. You're in class at you move into the dorms Wednesday. He stated in a tired voice before the hologram shut off. The room was dead silent for a few seconds before Izuku wheezed. Oh my god that was wonderful. He nearly shouted through laughter and tears. Calming down, he opened his letter with a claw and his own metal disc clattered to the table. Hello, am I a bear, a mouse or a dog? I'm a projection of the Dean of UA. University. I am proud to say you earned yourself the new record of most points in our school's history, with 89 villain points and a total of 111 rescue points, for a total of 200 points. Congratulations, and welcome to UA. I'm looking forward to your progress in Class A. And with that the projection shut off leaving the four around the table stunned. So dot 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 who wants to celebrate? Izuku asked after about a minute of silence, which was answered by Itsuko tackling him to the floor in an hug. Izuku, this is awesome. We're even in the same class. Laughing, Izuku hugged back and sat up. With the cat girl in his lap he began sorting through his papers for the schedule when he heard a shutter snap. Turning a bit he found both mothers with their phones out and smug smiles on their faces. Oh hey mom, Mrs. Kaniko, can you send me those? I need more ammunition to embarrass Etsu with. He absentmindedly began petting the girl's head as he read through the paperwork, resulting in a smiling and purring at Suko. After dinner Izuku said goodbye to the two Kanikos and laid down in bed, happy with the events that had taken place. Then he was startled by a knocking on his window, turning to see Itsuko pouting while hanging from the ledge. Chuckling, he opened the window and pulled her in. Come to celebrate. He smirked, earning him a slap and a hug. I can't come and congratulate my best friend. Wanted to be alone. She mumbled into his chest, petting her. Izuku yawned. Well your best friend here is tired so unless you're calm into bed with me G-Night Shorty. He began to pull back from the hug when she latched on tighter. You aren't getting rid of me that easily Izu. Now come on, let's get some sleep and we can pack in the morning. Picking her up he laid down as she curled up on top of him. If he had the best sleep of his life that night nobody needed to know. Between packing and having fun, Wednesday came faster than either had hoped. Izuku dressed in a button-up shirt, only for good impressions totally not to show off. Stepping through the doors of the dormitory, Izuku and Itsuko were assaulted by a storm of conversation from their new classmate. Smirking, Izuku noticed he was the tallest among them. Walking most heads turned to him and the smirk turned into a friendly smile. Hi there. Guests were stuck with each other for the next three years. He joked, getting a few chuckles while most others just stared at him. Eh, he was used to it. Doesn't mean he can't screw with them. What are you guys staring at? Is there something on my face? Suddenly quite a few people looked away feeling guilty. Then, suddenly a pink alien-looking person appeared in front of him. Hey young, uh, you have horns too. So does my friend Kirishima. You two would get along. As the girl spoke Itsuko had slowly made her way behind him to hide and hugged his back. Hi to you too, before anything else. What is your name? Oh, Ashido Mina. Just call me Mina, it's easier. Midoriya Izuku. Call me what you like. He put a hand out to shake when he heard what seemed like distressed wail. A blonde-haired boy with a black streak was staring with watery eyes at their interaction. How come you get two girls on the first day man? Do you have some kind of demonic charm to have a cutie hanging off your back like that? Izuku let out an inhuman growl that silenced the whole room. Silence boy, or you'll regret opening that damn mouth of yours. The blonde nodded furiously and Izuku led Itsuko up to their floor, opening his door and smiling. The movers had made his room look just like home. Itsuko let go of him and sat on his bed as he laid down sorry about that Etsu, dude just pissed me off. I it's fine Izu, actually kinda cute that you get all protective like that. Izuku spluttered as Itsuko laughed, standing back up. Izuku sighed and started to change his shirt out of the nice one he showed up in, into a more casual shirt when he heard talking outside his door. Opening it he felt someone knock on his chest, followed by embarrassed muttering. Looking down there two flustered girls, Mina and another he didn't know with brown hair. Can I help you too? His voice, with Itsurter's intervention, came out rougher than expected causing the two to squeak. 
brown-haired one. Care to explain since Mina appears to be comatose? Oh, we were having class get together. Wait, you can see me. My friend and I will be down soon. And yes, I can. With that he closed the door and grabbed his favorite shirt and the duo made their way back to the common room. Seeing their class arranged in a circle with Bakugo yelling at Kirishima about shitty hair and such sign. Izuku shouted Bakugo. Instantly the boy went ramrod straight and clamped his mouth shut. Stop harassing our classmates. You remember what happened last time don't you? Bakugo quickly and quietly sat down. The rest of the class was stunned and now even more fearful of the demonic boy who had essentially just tamed a wild animal. As Izuku sat on a couch with Itsuko curled up next to him. As soon as he sat down Mina shot up and explained what they were doing. Names, quirks and hobbies. Easy enough. As the others rattled off their quirks Izuku absent-mindedly began petting Itsuko again which caused her to snuggle into him more. Soon it was his turn and he smiled. I'm Midoriya Izuku and I like to cook. Nice to meet you. My quirk is Hell Lord. Fun name Ho. Huh? There was silence for a second before Itsuko tiredly muttered out her quirk before falling asleep against Izuku's side. As the class finished up their introductions Izuku carefully extracted himself from Itsuko's grip and made his way to the kitchen. Hanging from a hook was his favorite apron. It was bright pink with Kiss the Cook in a blue, cursive font with a large lipstick mark at the end. God bless those movers, they were amazing. He quickly turned on his favorite pre-quirk radio station and got to work. As he cooked he sang along, not noticing the small crowd gathering. They're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. You'd be like heaven to touch. I wanna hold you so much. At long last, love has arrived. And I thank God I'm alive. They're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. Pardon the way that I stare. There's nothing else to compare. The sight of you leaves me weak. There are no words left to speak. But if you feel like I feel, please let me know that it's real. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. I love you, baby. And if it's quite alright, I need you, baby, to warm the lonely night. I love you, baby. Trust in me when I say, oh, pretty baby, don't bring me down, I pray. Oh, pretty baby, now that I've found you, stay. And let me love you, baby. Let me love you. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. You'd be like heaven to touch. I wanna hold you so much. At long last, love has arrived. And I thank God I'm alive. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off you. I love you, baby. And if it's quite alright, I need you, baby, to warm the lonely night. I love you, baby. Trust in me when I say, Oh, pretty baby, don't bring me down, I pray. Oh, pretty baby, now that I've found you, stay. Oh, pretty baby, trust in me when I say, Oh, pretty baby. Smiling as he finished the song he dropped the last of the katsudan into the pan and turned to see the small group staring at him in awe. His smile turning into a smirk, he began flipping and doing small tricks with the food in the pan. Soon he felt someone hug him behind and mumble tiredly about leaving her on the couch. Serving the food he grabbed his plate as well as his friends and made his way to the dining room. Stepping into class on the first day was incredible. Taking his seat behind Bakugo with Itsuko behind him he sat and relaxed until the door opened and revealed the man from Itsuko's acceptance letter. Holy shit it's you Izuku wheezed and leaned over his desk laughing. While he was trying to catch his breath the hobo sighed and tossed a gym uniform at him before stating that they would be expelled if they didn't arrive in 15 minutes. Rushing, Izuku changed and arrived with 12 minutes to spare. So he and the hobo just sat there quietly before Izuku sighed and broke the silence. I wanted to let you know I won't be able to use my full quirk. I've heard about your little test. Aizawa's head snapped to him and the teacher raised an eyebrow. And why is that Midoriya? Oh cause my quirk is sentient and if I use it fully I'm pretty sure two of your students would be killed. Aizawa did a double take at that, killed, sentient quirk, oh god, there's already a problem child. Soon the rest of the class filed out onto the field and lined up. Midoriya, you had the highest score on the practical, what was your score for the ball toss in high school? Ah, uh, like 30 meters, I don't know I wasn't paying attention. And why was that? Aizawa was getting annoyed with this kid. He was one of the kids who thought he was better for having a powerful quirk probably. There was always one or two of them each year. Oh, I was too busy getting bullied for my quirk to hear the teacher. Why does that matter? Well, that certainly shut the class and Aizawa up. The teacher tossed him a ball and gestured to a white circle. Use your quirk to throw this as far as possible. Just stay inside the circle. Stepping into the circle Izuku smiled. It had been a month since he'd actually gotten to use his quirk. This thing fireproof. Aizawa just nodded, causing his smile to grow dark good. Then he barely threw the ball, confusing everyone as he raised his palm and suddenly he was engulfed in a massive explosion of flame that caused the class to scream and the ball to launch forward. As the flames dissipated Izuku just stood there stretching, a completely different pair of pants on and no shirt. Stepping out of the circle the machine beeped and he smiled. 6,666 meters. Staring at the screen the class gaped and started to prepare for the tests to come. 
As everyone walked to the first test Atsuko made her way to Izuku's side. Izu, where'd the pants come from? I started carrying extra pairs around after the first transformation. Realized I shouldn't risk running home commando. She laughed and Aizawa turned around and glared at them. What's so funny you two? Why aren't jumper cables allowed in clubs? Izuku deadpanned and stared their teacher right in the eyes. Now isn't the time for jokes. If you don't take this seriously you're leaving tonight. You're running first with Bakugo. Izuku shrugged and stepped up to the line and stretched as Bakugo stepped up and cracked his knuckles. Thinking he had this in the bag he put his hands facing back and glared at Izuku out of the corner of his eye. As he glared he saw as the wings sprouted from his back and spread out to their full size and the demonic teen crouched into a runner's stance. The starting gun fired and Bakugo blasted off down the small track leaving smoke behind him and looking back. Then he heard the machine beep and his eyes shot forward and he saw Izuku talking to Itsuko at the end of the track. Fuming, he stomped off as the damn villain laughed with their classmates. They needed to see him for what he is, that's all. If he transforms then they'll know he's evil. The blonde smirked as he decided on a plan. The tests were quite easy for Izuku, even without fully transforming. He was a little disappointed but hey, can't always get what you want. Seems he was getting revenge today though and that's always a plus. He was chatting with Itsuko when he heard a barrage of explosions and saw an angry looking Bakugo rocketing towards them. Anger brewing in him he stepped forward, channeling his rage into his strength. Bakugo's hand collided with his face and detonated. Drawing a gasp from the class, one that was repeated when Izuku's hand, now with claws instead of nails, grasped his neck and slammed him into the ground shattering the cement around the shorter teen. Ha, huh? look at you, acting like a villain. That's all you are. I quote LLF ain't kill you and do the class a favor. Bakugo screamed at him while laughing. Suddenly a massive explosion slammed into Izuku's abdomen and a massive cloud of dust and smoke erupted, drawing Aizawa's attention. He ran over and Itsuko grabbed him. B. Bakugo just attacked Izuku. Something about him being a V villain or something. Bakugo's B been harassing Izuku as since their quirks came in. Aizawa dived into the smoke to try and find the two but instead found an unconscious Bakugo and a panting Izuku sitting down next to him. Hey teach, can I get some help please? He's heavy. MHMM Aizawa and Izuku carried the unconscious assailant towards the building as the smoke cleared so. What happened problem child? Oh, he said something about doing the class a favor and killing me. And that I'm a villain. I dunno I think he's kinda crazy. Out of the corner of his eye Izuku noticed a frail man giving him a glare. He waved at the man, who seemed surprised that Izuku noticed him and scampered away. I am coming through the door like a normal person. A chorus of shouts sprung up from across the room. Turns out All Might was teaching heroics. The hero seemed to glare at the empty desk in front of him, and then at him for a second but it was so quick that no one would have noticed. Except years of training with bullies helps you know when someone is targeting you. Turns out there was an event planned but due to the incident with Bakugo, who was on dorm arrest until they could decide what to do with him, they just got a lecture over the importance of community service in the hero industry. Not a terrible class but All Might was sort of a bad teacher, constantly going on tangents and he actually had a script at one point. After class All Might had asked him to stay behind, which he listened to. Even if he was a little shit he was still going to listen to the UA. Staff, why did you attack young Bakugo? Oh god he was one of these a-holes. He attacked me sir, claiming I was a villain because of my quirk. That is highly doubtful. With young Bakugo's record being spotless and yours being less than stellar. Oh, I didn't know the number one hero was as quirkist as everyone else. And I have witnesses. Just ask anyone in my class, they saw it. Oh, and why are you skinny like that? All Might paled at that and in a cloud of smoke shrunk down into the smaller form of the man who was glaring at him yesterday. How did you know Midoriya? Oh, I can see transformation user's true form. Part of my quirk called True Sight. Pretty cool and useful to identify suspects. Now, why are you harassing me for something I didn't do? Because I saw you grab him by the throat at your training yesterday. That's why. All Might seemed to smirk at that, thinking he'd caught the boy in a lie. Oh, but you conveniently didn't see Bakugo rocket at me or hear the explosions. All Might somehow deflated a little more at that. I wonder how much Nezu would like to know that the number one hero was harassing a student of the hero course. All Might froze at that. Izuku took that as his chance to leave, but not before turning back and sending a sickeningly sweet smile towards the skinny pro. And I will be filing a formal complaint over this. I do hope you can keep your job, would make things boring if you didn't. And with that the horn teen took his leave and left the stunned pro standing in the classroom. Suddenly, the intercom buzzed to life and the squeaky voice of the dean buzzed through. All might if you would please come to my office, it seems we have something to discuss. As Izuku left the class and met up with Itsuko who was standing a few feet away he heard Nezu's announcement. He knew the dean heard everything in the school so it was only a matter of making it obvious who he was talking to and that was the final nail in All Might's metaphorical coffin. So, what do you think we should do for dinner Atsu? 
The small girl thought for a moment for smiling up at him, blinding the boy for a second. What about sushi? She asked excitedly. Sushi it is. Should probably get back to the dorm so we can get started. He smiles and she nods and starts to run ahead, leaving Izuku to catch up. As they reach the dorms Itsuko turns around Izuku is blinded again by a smile as she drags him inside. Only one thought crosses his mind as they make dinner together. F, I think I'm falling in love. Really? With who? Itsuko asked curiosity and tinge of something else he didn't recognize in her voice. I muttered that didn't I? W well um, you see. Izuku spluttered, trying to figure out how to explain without being found out. Looking down he saw Itsuko staring at him expectantly while tapping her foot. A cute image really. Well, who? Izuku whispered something and she raised an eyebrow. Since when do you get embarrassed anymore Izu? Thought you were a big, bad demon. She knew what she was doing. His demonic mind believed in honor and pride and she just insulted both. Fine. He snarled making her jump back a bit and his face softened. Sorry. He said quietly before looking to the side a bit and rubbing the back of his head. She stared at him for a second before stepping up and looking at him. Come on just tell me Izu. Please. How angry would you be if I said it was you? He asked, gaze drifting to the farther away as he waited to get rejected when he suddenly felt the girl's arms wrap around him. Looking at her, he saw a teary-eyed Itsuko hugging him with a massive smile on her face. I, I was hoping why you'd say that. She giggled as she buried her face in his chest and he hugged her back. Picking her up, he walked over to the couch and sat down with Itsuko curled up into his chest. Even though they'd done it a million times before this time was special, even if for such a cheesy reason. So, I'm assuming that's an I love you too. He teased, earning a shy nod against his chest. Smiling, he pet her and leaned back. Closing his eyes he relaxed into their embrace and let sleep overtake him. Izuku's eyes blinked open to a dark common room, clearly visible but shown in a range of dull gray to black, and a quietly snoring Itsuko on his chest, with a small smile on her face. Blinking the sleep from his eyes he heard someone coming down the step. Glancing over he saw the avian head of Takoyami. Using one of his least used abilities Izuku reached out to the bird's mind and spoke. Hey, Takoyami. What time is it? The boy jumped before looking at Izuku who had a finger to his mouth in a quiet gesture speak through the link. I don't want to wake Itsuko up. It should feel like those old toys everyone had with the cans and the string. I believe it is about 3 am how are we doing this? My quirk, telepathy is a part of it too. It's broken as hell, pun intended, but I'm not going to whine about it. I see. Well apologies for awaking you but why are you two sleeping down here instead of your dorm? Would it not be more private that way? Well, I passed out after dinner and Itsuko never bothered to wake me up so we just slept here. And no worries, you didn't wake me. Sitting down across from him on a couch, Takoyami glanced at the odd duo on the other couch. Do you mind if I ask a few questions about your quirk? Not at all. Let me hear the questions my avian friend. So, are you an actual creature of darkness or is it just a quirk? Real devil. Well kinda, it's like three quarters devil and a quarter quirk. Makes exorcisms difficult. They still feel weird though, like a massive part of you is getting pulled through the small end of a funnel. Izuku shivered at the thought when Shizaki attempted to exercise him and how it felt. The two boys continued like this into the early morning, the sun slowly rising over the horizon as Takoyami bid his farewell and retreated back to his room to prepare for the day. Izuku gently shook Itsuko awake, who then proceeded to stretch, kiss his cheek tiredly and nuzzle back into his chest and fall asleep. He decided staying on the couch for a bit longer wasn't a terrible idea. Eventually the class began to funnel down into the common room, cooing at the pair and teasing Izuku about his unfortunate situation. As they spoke Itsuko mumbled and rolled over. Izuku shot the entire class a murderous glare and spoke quietly. If any of you wake her up I'm going to turn you into kindling, so I suggest you shut up. He huffed, smoke puffing out of his mouth as he spoke as if to reinforce the threat. After another half hour of mostly silence Itsuko started waking up mumbling about five more minutes until she realized what predicament she was in. As soon as she realized what was going on she shot up and accidentally scratched Izuku as she dashed out of the common room, face a bright red. Nina was the first to break the silence. So Izuku, wanna explain what that was about? So, you have chosen. Death. Izuku muttered causing Mina to tense and Kaminari to spit out his drink, laughing, as he recognized the centuries-old meme. Standing up, Izuku began making breakfast for himself and Itsuko while talking to Itserter internally. Did you really have to make me mutter my confession to Itsuko out loud? Of course I did. You would have never said it yourself, Lord. I did you a favor. I hate when you make sense. Hey, you know that clothes thing you do. Can you get me a clean uniform? Don't feel like having it a yell at me for having a dirty uniform. As soon as Izuku asked, he felt his clothes ruffle and looked down to see a fresh uniform instead of his dirty one. How do you do that? Plot convenience. What? What? So you're telling me you've never played Superior Slam siblings? Kaminari asked, slightly horrified. No, is there something wrong about that? Izuku responded. 
Not looking up from his phone, suddenly the device was snatched from his hands and a controller was thrust into them. You, me, now, Kaminari ordered as he dragged the demonic boy towards the now hooked up Nintendo swap. The two plopped down on the couch and got comfortable as Kaminari started the system up and the game loaded. So wanna give me the controls or am I learning trial by fire style Kami? Trial by fire bro. Everyone learns that way. I've been playing this series for years and I don't think I've ever actually read the controls to be honest. Soon after they selected their characters and got into the thick of it, the first three matches were a cakewalk for Kaminari. But sadly Izuku always was a fast learner. Soon he began losing more and more until eventually he only won or two matches an hour. How are you so good? I thought you never played. I haven't. You just suck at this game blondie. One more round, loser orders take out. Deal, nodding. Kaminari selected his best character, Pichu, while Izuku selected the random character choice getting a look from Kaminari. What? Gotta give you a small chance bro. The match loaded and revealed Izuku got Ganon. Oh never mind you are f-ed Izuku chuckled as the match started and after just two minutes the match ended in a flawless victory for Izuku, losing none of his lives. Maybe dorm life wouldn't be so bad after all. Next dot 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 you all will make a decision that will change your futures. Aizawa droned, causing the entire class to tense up and hold their breath. You'll be choosing your class representatives. The entire class sighed in relief and simultaneously thought the same thing dramatic much. Suddenly the class erupted into shouts and claims for reasons why someone should vote for them. Things slowly got louder until Izuku heard Itsuko whimper and turned to see her clutching her ears. Izuku felt a pulse of rage in his very being as stood. Silence. Izuku snarled, an orange glow pulsing from his eyes. The class went dead silent as he glared. Quit your bickering. We're going to vote. Simple as that. It's the most efficient way and it will keep you from acting like five-year-olds. He stared for a second as if inviting objections. Eventually the glow faded as Izuku sat back down and angrily ripped a piece of paper from a notebook before ripping it in half, passing one half to Itsuko then scribbling something onto his own half. The class shook out of their stupor and quickly wrote their votes and passed them to the front where Aizawa reluctantly counted them. Most students got one or zero votes excluding two. Izuku receiving seven and Yeirazu receiving four. All right, Midoriya is your rep and Yeirazu is your vice rep. Aizawa tiredly stated while lazily gesturing to the two students now standing at the front of the room before wrapping himself in his sleeping bag and falling to the floor in one movement. Smiling, Izuku turned to Yeirazu and stuck his hand out to shake. Looking forward to working with you. She shook his hand with a quiet likewise before they made their way back to their seats. The rest of classes that day went off without a hitch. Heroics had a substitute much to the surprise of everyone except Izuku. Aizawa didn't even try to expel anyone. Things seemed to be looking up for class 1A, which meant something was about to happen that would change their lives. The hero class eventually made their way to lunch, divided into cliques and squads. Izuku was sitting with Ida, Yuraka, Itsuko and Kaminari. Turns out the blonde-haired boy was actually quite alright when he wasn't being an idiot. So, why aren't jumper cables allowed in clubs? Atsuko sighed as Izuku began the joke for the 20th time since moving into the dorms. Izu, sweetheart, if you don't stop with trying to tell that pun I'm going to cut your tongue out. Deflating a bit, Izuku returned to eating his lunch and making small talk with the others at the table until a siren blared through the cafeteria sending everyone scrambling for the exit in a massive stampede. Izuku's instincts kicked in and he began looking around for exits and potential threats. As he did he saw the press pressing in from the destroyed barrier, barely hearing it or rattling off about intruders. He began hearing shouts of pain and saw people getting trampled as the crowd surged forward. Having enough of their idiocy Izuku kicked off the ground and landed halfway up a wall near the exit and let out a guttural roar attracting the attention of the entire room. It's the press you savages. If you kept this up someone could have been seriously injured. Now act like you eh? Students not like animals. He sighed as the students began to file out in an orderly fashion and slid down the wall, leaving claw marks all the way down. Ada began yelling at him for damaging school property until Cementos repaired the wall like it was nothing and nodded at Izuku. Soon after this they had been gathered back in their homeroom waiting for Aizawa to tell them what had happened when the door slid open to see a more tired than usual Aizawa. The press broke through the barrier and caused a panic. Thankfully one of you had the common sense to stop the stampede before it got out of hand. Thanks I guess Midoriya. He ended the sentence with a shrug before flopping over and wrapping himself into his sleeping back in one smooth movement. Hesitantly, the class began talking again as the minutes ticked by until classes began again to complete the rest of the day. As time crawled on the class noticed an uneasy feeling building over not just the class, but the entire school. Something bad was coming and it wouldn't end well for anyone it seemed. I have good news children, Aizawa sighed. All your classes are cancelled for the day. The class, Sans Ada and Izuku, cheered. We're going on a field trip. 
You can either try out your new hero costumes or put on your gym uniform. Just be down at the front in 20 minutes. As he finished, he pressed a button that caused shelves with numbered cases to extend from the wall. Grabbing their cases and rushing to the changing rooms the class hurriedly threw on their suits before rushing to the front. Izuku's suit consisted of a dark red pinstripe suit with green stripes and a dark green tie. All fireproofed and infused with his hair allowing it to morph into him if he were to transform as well as created with a ballistic weave to keep him protected from projectiles while in his human form. As Ida shouted about a seating chart Izuku sighed and stepped onto the bus followed by the rest of the class. The open seating of the bus ruining Ida's seating arrangement as the class spread out to random seats. The bus lumbered away from the school and conversations slowly sprung up around the bus. Hey Midoriya, what exactly does your quirk do? I'm curious. Izuku looked up to see Tsuyu and the rest of the people around him staring expectantly. I don't like talking about it. It's not all good and heroic, as far as all my bullies said, so I usually keep quiet. Sorry. The rest of the kid's faces turned from interest to guilt as he spoke, feeling bad for dragging up negative memories. After a couple minutes the bus slowed to a stop in front of a massive domed building. The class filed out and assembled at the base of the steps as a figure in a puffy spacesuit stepped out. This earned a squeal from Yuraka as she fangirled over the space heroine. Izuku tuned out for a bit until they stepped inside. As they were about to start their lessons the lights flickered and a swirling mass of Inkai black mist formed in the center of the courtyard. Hey, teach, is that a part of training? Kaminari nervously asked while pointing at the expanding cloud. Soon, villains began pouring out until there was a massive horde with three main villains standing at the rear. One covered in disembodied hands, one made of the mist and finally a hulking monstrosity with an exposed brain and beak. No, those are real villains Eraserhead went to take step forward but was cut off by Izuku stepping forward. What are you doing? Eraserhead focus your quirk on the mist villain. He's their way out. I'll take care of the others. Trust me please. Hesitating for a second, Eraserhead did as he was asked and erased the mist villain's quirk before a word could be said by the invading forces. As soon as his quirk was gone the villain collapsed and the mist dissipated and he began spasming. Sighing, Izuku made his way down the steps. Fixing his cuffs as he did, the villains began to move forward but froze as a spine-chilling laugh washed over them. You lot really believe you could take me on? Eh. Izuku chuckled and snapped a finger and two purple devils with wings encoded in spines burst into existence with a gout of flame, flanking him, dramatically raising his arms in a grand gesture. His voice thundered across the courtyard with an unnaturally guttural tone be good little prey and die without resisting and I'll consider making your end short. As he finished speaking his steps began to crack the cement as the sound of snapping bone accompanied the sight of the boy's form changing. His suit melded with his skin from the waist up as his height grew and his skin became taut and leathery the ridges of his spine showing through. His back hunched over as his arms dropped down in front of him like a puppet with its strings cut and his hair lengthened and tangled until it covered his face. Hellish skeletal wings and a long, barbed tail shot forth from his back as his skin paled until his complexion was akin to snow. Flicking his wrists, bloody red claws shot out from where his nails should be and his head snapped up with a wicked grin of sharpened teeth and a single swirling green and orange eye showing through the green-black mess of his hair. His eyes shot back and forth over the horde in front of him manically moving from person to person as if searching for something. Then, speaking, not in any human tongue but instead a language that grated on the sanity of everyone who heard the wicked speech he spoke to the devils waiting loyally behind him. Kill whomever you wish, leave only the large one and the leader for me. He then shot forward with his wings propelling him, shattering the cement into a fine powder and sending a gale slamming into his classmates behind him, pouncing onto a villain. His claws dug into their shoulders as he bit into their throat and launched off again with a spray of blood and a sadistic cackle leaving the body to drop to the floor. He tackled down a second villain shredding their neck with teeth and claw. Standing up he threw his head back and laughed, blood dripping down from the sides of his mouth and off his chin. Come my children, come and slaughter as I am doing and revel in their screams. At the command the flying devils joined the fray, launching barbs and attacking with claws and tail as well. Shooting off again, he began using his tail to stab through the stomachs and heads of villains while clawing at the eyes of others. Sadistic glee flowed off him in waves as he began moving faster and faster causing the villains to shake in fear. As the slaughter continued the horrific grin never left his face, and the echoes of his laughter frightened even his classmates. Screams of the villains echoed through the complex as the massacre continued relentlessly. One villain with a ranged quirk fired a bullet straight at his heart and froze as it just glanced off his skin barely cutting into the leathery flesh but earning the devil's undivided attention. Standing up straight from his hunched position his smile widened to the point the corners were cracking slightly. Tutting he slowly began advancing as the villain began recklessly firing. As the bullets glanced off he began to advance faster and faster until, when the magazine was expended, he was looming over his next victim. Oh look at you little one. 
so full of violence and anger. My children of the seventh will love you. Reaching down, he grasped the villain's throat and lifted them to eye level and a pulse of flame engulfed their body, screaming and thrashing until finally, the ceased and went limp in his hand. Dropping them he turned and hunched over before shooting off back into the fray. As this happened the rest of Class 1 watched on horrified as they watched their newly elected class representative killed seemingly without hesitation or remorse. Itsuko, unfazed, sighed. He won't harm any of us. You don't have to worry. H how are you so calm about this? Your boyfriend is down there slaughtering people. Mina screamed, her statement punctuated by the scream of a villain and the sound of tearing flesh. Because this isn't the first time Izu's killed someone. Some dude tried to kill us once and he just burned him up. There were one or two other times as well. She then frowned. But I do feel bad for those villains. Izuku's still holding back on them and they're dropping like flies. This is holding back. Mm him. Suddenly Ada spoke up are we sure that someone such as him should be in the hero course? His hand cutting robotically through the air. Itsuko grabbed the boy's collar and yanked him down to her height. Izuku has worked harder than any of you have to get here. He was told to kill himself by prejudice to holes like you. Shut your entitled ass up and be thankful he's saving your life instead of ending up a villain. It's people like you that need to be taught that the world isn't all black and white. There's gray spots too. The class was silent, contemplating what they had heard when suddenly there was a roar from Izuku, which drew their attention back to the battle at hand. By now the courtyard was littered with corpses and dyed crimson. Only five villains remained, one charging forward. Izuku ran his tail through the head of the foolish villain, letting out a rasping snarl. Izuku stood above the remaining villains and stared down at them. Surrender now and I'll consider letting you live, peasants, dropping to their knees and bowing. The remaining four villains never noticed the barbs coming until it was too late. Turning to the pair of leaders Izuku sighed. Would you just give up? It would make things much. Naomu killed that monster. Was all Izuku heard before the beaked villain blurred and appeared before him with a fist buried in his gut. Izuku's body was motionless, slung over the beast's fist. Gasps echoed from the class and sob tore from Itsuko's throat. As she began crying the leader turned to the class, trying to grab something but as soon as all five fingers made contact it crumbled to dust. Oh, don't worry. You'll be joining him soon. Namukai G.A.H. The man's sentence was cut off as Izuku punched him across the courtyard, standing straight up, his wings disappearing into his back. Izuku stared at the hand-covered villain emotionlessly, his eyes now a flaming orange rather a verdant orange maelstrom. You, a useless brat, think you can threaten the people I have taken into my care. I am Edserter, one of the nine lords of the nine hells. Learn your place bug. Izuku growled, stomping towards him but being stopped by the beaked Naomu. Move. As the Naomu tried to throw a punch, Izuku grabbed the fist and sent forth a blast of flame that completely engulfed the creature and casted shadows across the entire courtyard. The howls and screams of the beast echoed through the building as the fire crackled and raged, staring at the burning wreck as it went silent. Izuku watched as the flames thrashed and curled into the air until the bones were charred black. Staring back up at the hand villain, he growled and began to trudge forward with renewed anger, the cement shattering and earth shaking underneath him. How'd you beat Namu? You're a hacker, a cheater. Silence. The air rippled with heat as he shouted, smoke bellowing out of his mouth. You will not speak unless commanded to do so. You think you can tell me what to do? I am Shiga. The villain screamed out as the tail ripped through his shoulder, completely severing his arm. He stared blankly at the limb as it lay on the floor still bleeding. My arm. You bastard I needed that. You're going to pay for that. Lunging. Shigaraki reached out with his one good hand to disintegrate Izuku only for his hand to be cleaved off at the wrist by one of his claws. Now, raising his palm to the villain who was now on his knees in front of Izuku, an orb of fire began to grow in his palm. Slowly, it grew until it was the size of a watermelon. Are you ready to die? The fireball launched forward only to enter a portal of the black mist and redirected into the conflagration zone. Head shooting to the side, Izuku saw a middle-aged man kneeling next to Aizawa with swirling black mist in the shape of a nice haircut atop his head. Aizawa, why have you allowed this villain to stop me? The black-clad hero just sighed we need him alive Izuku. And I'll explain Shurikumo later, just don't kill the Shigaraki kid. As he finished speaking, a grey goo spouted out from Shigaraki's mouth and engulfed him and when it cleared the villain was nowhere to be seen. Now look what you did, he got away. Shifting down back into his full suit Izuku tiredly sighed as he straightened his tie. Not without some damage though. Fixing his jacket cuffs, Izuku then turned to the rest of the class with burning orange eyes and bowed, Hello, I am Adserter, Lord of the Seventh Circle of Hell and the devil hosted within the boy you know is Midoriya Izuku. Pleasure to meet you all. Straightening up, he saw the gaping mouths of the class. Your ascension quirk, Kaminari shouted, receiving a polite nod from the verdant team. Next to speak was Momo. The Seventh Circle, is that not the circle of violence? Indeed, of all my brothers and sisters I am the strongest. 
and as such posed too much of a threat to Asmodeus. He sent me here as a quirk to scout out the world as well as eliminate my threat to his power. I still have access to a few things from that dimension though. Walking over towards his teacher he felt something slam into his side and looked down to see a teary-eyed Atsuko hugging him. Laughing a bit, he hugged her back. You need to stop scaring me like that. What is this? The third time you've almost died. All she got in response was a shrug before he turned to the class staring at him hesitantly. Can I help you all? He asked coldly, making the entire class flinch. Glaring for a second before sighing, he made his way over to Aizawa, who was speaking with the mist villain and tearing up. It's really you. Holy shit. The mist villain, hostage, slave, whatever the mist guy was, he had a shit-eating grin on his face. Sorry for not writing, been busy with work. Eraserhead, slapping him upside the head, smiled. Hey teach, sorry for ruining the bromance but I wanna ask some questions. Like who is this dude and why did he go from refined and collected to levels of shithead I haven't even reached yet? Jumping a bit, Eraserhead sighed. He's an old classmate I had who we thought died. Idid die a hole, who died, and was revived and enslaved by a villain. And kid, this isn't even close to how bad he can be. Izuku shook the man's hand, both of them grinning. We're gonna get along swimmingly. Eventually, the paramedics and police showed up alongside the backup heroes. Needless to say they were all slightly disturbed by seeing a demon boy in a suit looting dead villain's pockets nonchalantly who then looked up and waved at them before walking over to the rest of his classmates and chatting up a cat girl. The police began making their way through the building, bagging the bodies of the villains in the courtyard and arresting the villains that were hiding in the different zones. As the paramedics looked over the students they noticed two glaring facts. No one was injured except for one, and that same one was barely roughed up even though he took on a horde of villains. The only indication of such was the massive bruising and single cracked rib as well as a few minor cuts from what seemed to be projectiles that glanced off his skin. And before he could even reach recovery girl they realized his wounds had completely cauterized and healed. The bus ride back to campus was tense. At least for most people it was. In the back Kaminari, Itsuko and Izuku chatted without a care in the world as the rest of the class sat silent and stole glances back at their horned classmate. And then I told him, no, you listen. Just cause I look like the devil doesn't mean I'm your goat god. Kaminari and Izuku laughed while Itsuko sighed fondly and shook her head as Izuku finished his story. Bro, you could have had your own cult. Why didn't you go for it? Because then I wouldn't have been able to become a hero. And hero is the only career I can truly help people. The rest of the class began to feel even more guilty as he explained. But their mood brightened slightly with a cry of manly from Kirishima. Eventually, their bus pulled slowly back to the front of their campus. As the vehicle ground to a halt Aizawa stood up. Everyone except the back three get off my bus. The class scampered off the bus, stealing glances at the trio who were still just chatting amongst themselves. As they left, they saw Izuku stare at them out of the corner of his eye, which flashed orange. When his eyes flashed they moved faster until it was just the four of them sitting on the bus. Making his way to the back of the bus, Aizawa sat down with the three teens whose eyes widened in surprise when his face softened and, in a quiet voice, asked are you alright Midoriya? Sir, if you act like that you're gonna make me think you care. Izuku chuckled, but stopped as he saw Aizawa's serious face. I do care. Now, are you okay or not kid? Sighing, Izuku leaned forward with his hand clasped together. I don't know. I don't regret any of what I did but I have a feeling that the class isn't very appreciative. That's how it goes. You save them, but not how they wanted to be saved and now they're angry. I've been there, and it's best to just disassociate from them. You got two friends right here and that's all you're gonna need until you're a hero. As he finished Kaminari held up his fist for a fist bump and Itsuko leaned against him. Smiling, Izuku fist bumped his friend and shook his teacher's hand. Thanks teach. Now, can you file for a student transfer to 1B for me please? Nodding, Aizawa got up and stepped off the bus and moved towards the school but not before glaring at class 1A. The class noticed their teacher's cold gaze and quickly silenced. Is something wrong sir? Ada asked in his usual robotic manner. If you didn't have so much potential you would all be expelled. Thank your lucky stars. With that, their teacher left them dumbstruck as he reluctantly went to fill out the paperwork for a transfer. The class returned to the dorms to find Izuku cooking with Kaminari and Itsuko sitting at the counter talking, Kaminari dramatically gesturing while Itsuko was obviously trying not to laugh. The aroma of cooking and the jovial tone lightened the mood of the class, at least until Izuku looked over at the students, frowned, and then went back to cooking whatever meal he was making. The students slowly dispersed around the common room, making sure to stay away from the kitchen, except Mina, who excitedly made her way into the room with Midoriya and hopped up onto the counter next to him. Wachamak and Midori. Soba. What's up Mina? Just wanted to talk. You look lonely in here. Thanks Mina. At least a few of them are decent. MHMM. I know how it feels you know. Getting ignored for your quirk and stuff. If you need to talk I live on the same floor as you. 
Thank you, but I'm not gonna be here much longer. Everyone, except Itsuko and Kaminari, looked over to the kitchen at this. You're leaving Ribbit. Not leaving per se. Just moving to class 1B. I asked Aizawa to do the paperwork while we were on the bus. I transfer after class tomorrow. You're getting Shizaki in this class. Mina, be careful. She's quirkous towards people who look like demons or devils. The pink girl just nods as he turns back to finish the food. Only to find Todoroki had already finished and was eating it in a bowl of ice. Servings were also put off to the side for the rest of the class. Nodding at the heterochromatic teen. He served himself and his friends before sitting down with them. The class was subdued that day. Izuku had left after lunch to complete the transfer and hadn't returned since. The door slid open to show a shock of green hair. Midori Ha. The class looked over and saw the vine-haired Shizaki who was glancing around nervously with Aizawa behind her. Everyone this is Ibarra Shizaki. I expect you all to be decent to one another. As he said this he glanced at Ibarra out of the corner of his eye. She quickly moved to her seat and sat down. With Bakugo's empty seat ahead of her and Itsuko behind her. As the classes went on she could feel the daggers being glared into her back as the class stared at her. In class 1B something quite similar was happening. A flash of green hair entered with a thud of the door. Monoma shot up. Annoyed that a one a student was coming into their class Shizaki we who the F are you? I'm your new classmate. But if you sat down and let me introduce myself maybe you'd know that. Izuku shot back, silencing the blonde boy. Why are you transferring? Couldn't handle the fame. Too annoyed with the press. Monoma spat back, starting to get aggravated. No, I killed 36 people in front of one at the USJ and they weren't very happy about me saving them. And they found out I killed other a few other villains too. He nonchalantly stated, causing Monoma to stop and think. So, you dislike one or what? Not all of them, three of them are alright. And also, if I hear you talk shit about my girlfriend his teeth sharpened and his eyes tinted orange, my kill count is going up to 40. Monoma nodded and sat down. And Izuku's teeth reverted to normal and he smiled. Well, nice to meet you guys. I hope we can be friends. He made his way to his seat and began chatting with some of his new classmates. Feeling content with what was to come. Okay sadly the chapter is over, and if you enjoyed the video just leave a like, and subscribe with post notification, so when the next chapter is ready, you will be notified. Okay see you in the next video, bye.